Okay guys, welcome back to another lesson. So in this lesson, we're gonna take a look at creating to-dos. So there's a few things we need to do here. We need to create the to-do model. We need to create the to-do API route. And then we actually need to physically create and get to-dos um, via API routes. So let's go back to our code here. Um, I need to make sure that I'm running the server. So npm run server in the terminal. Oh, and I need to zoom in for you guys. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close all of these um, pages for now, um, seeing as we need to start afresh, really. So first of all, we need to create the to-do model. This is basically, um, as we did with the user model, we need to create a model to that the data follows uh, to store in the database. So we're gonna create a new model and in the models folder, it's gonna be called todo.js. We're going to follow the exact same method we used with Oh, we've got an app crash already. What are we crashing for? Okay, it's because our server is in use elsewhere. Let me try that again, npm run server. Okay, brilliant. So we are going to do what we did previously. We are going to grab the schema and the model um, from Mongoose. So require Mongoose. And then we are going to create our new schema. So const to do schema is equal to new schema, round brackets, and then curly brackets in, so and then we'll enter in there, curly brackets inside. So we are going to um, basically define what our to-do model is going to look like. So the first thing we need is a user um, property. And this user property basically tells tells the database who the, who the to-do belongs to. It allows us to grab a user to-do via their user ID. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a new type. This type is going to be called we're going to make use of schema with a capital S dot types with a capital T dot object ID. And this basically tells us that the type of this is going to be an object ID uh, related to another document in the database. And we're going to add ref, which is which stands for reference. So it's referencing the user model. So user in there. Then what we're going to do is we've got the content. So this is going to be the content of the to do. For example, do the dishes. So that's going to be a type of string. We're always going to need that so it's going to be required as true and then we need to mark whether a to do is complete or not so we're going to add a complete and we are going to that's going to be a type of boolean so that's going to be a true or false value so boolean and we're going to send through the default as false so it's by default it's going to be incomplete and then we're going to add a completed at property and that's going to be a type of date and we're just going to leave that as it is for now um, and that basically means that when we complete a to-do, we, we can mark it with a completed at date. So I'm then going to open up some more curly braces after these ones. And we're going to add the timestamps as we did with the last one. So timestamps true. And then we need to export our model. So we are going to app a comment in there, export model. And then we're going to do const to do equals a model to do to do schema. So we're passing in, we're creating a model called to do using the to do schema. And then we need to export that. So module.export equals to do. Brilliant, so we've got our model set up already. That was nice and quick. Uh, let's uh, zoom out of that a bit. There we go. And then what we're gonna do is like our raw fruit, we're gonna create a new to do's root. So let's have a look. Inside roots, we're going to make a new file it's going to be called to dos.js. We need to import express. So const express equals require express. This is exactly the same as what we did in the setup for the auth root. Const uh, router equals express.router. And then what are we going to need in here? We're going to need a number of things. We're going to need uh, the to do model. So const to do equals require models dot 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 slash model slash to do so that's grabbing the to do model that's going to be ready for later when we create our to do uh, we need our requires auth middleware to make sure that the user is authorized forward slash permissions and then const uh, validate no we need to create our validation in a minute so we can't import that one yet and then we're going to describe our we're going to do a test route again uh, so we're going to do uh our description, so at root, couple of tabs, it's going to be get forward slash API forward slash to do's forward slash test. 
and then we're going to do description and it's just going to be test to do's root and then that um, access is going to be public same as last time so then we're going to do a router.get request it's going to be forward slash test it's going to take in the request and the response as an arrow function and then we're just going to return res.send to do root or to do's root working and then we need to do module so we need to export this route so module exports equals router so that's our to do's route set up we're now going to go to server.js we need to import that so that our server can use it so we're going to in, in our import routes const to do's root equals require dot slash root slash to do's under uh, lowercase there so we've imported it now we need to make sure the app uses it so app dot use forward slash api forward slash to do's and to do's root there okay so if i save that then i should be able to go to postman let's clear off some of these we don't need that for now and we are going to do a test request to localhost Ooh, can't type 5000 forward slash api forward slash to do's and then forward slash test so i do a get request there to do's root is working brilliant so we know that is working okay so we've got our to do's root working now we actually need to make sure we can create a to do so we're going to copy this description we're going to make a new root it's going to be a post to slash api slash to do slash new and it's going to be create a new to do and that's going to be private you have to be logged in to create a to do it's going to be a router.post to forward slash new and we need to make use of our requires auth middleware so requires auth and then we're going to do an async request into an arrow function there so as we did last time and we need our classic try catch block so if there's an error so in a stack of error we're going to console log the error and then we're going to turn red turn res dot status it's going to be a 500 because it's going to be a server error and we're going to send the error dot message okay so inside of here we're going to add validation like we did last time but for now we're going to create a new to do we're going to take the user's input so it's going to be const new to do equals new to do so we're creating a new to do document and the user is going to be request.user.id so that's using the requires auth middleware it's attaching the user id to our new to do and it's going to have the content of request.body.content and by default we want complete as false they haven't completed it yet so that's created the new document but we need to save that to the database so we're going to do await new to do dot save and then after it's saved we're going to return res.json new to do okay perfect so we can go straight away and test this we need to add validation of course like we did with the user but we'll do that in a second so let's go to postman just going to log in quickly uh, so we're going to the slash login route to make sure that we're authorized send on that check the cookie we've got our access token so we should be good if i uh, go to the slash to do's here if i go to slash to do's new i'm going to make that a post request and inside the body so I, sorry i went to the body tab there went to the form url encoded tab the key is going to be content because that's the important thing we need to provide and it's going to be something like do the dishes and then click send perfect so that's really quick that was very quick um, at setting that one up it returns the user so we've attached the user correctly um, the content do the dishes it's complete false uh, we haven't done it yet and that's it that's a new one created um, do my homework i'm going to create another one now just to double check it there we go so we've got new two new to do's so we created to do's um we haven't validated them but more importantly we haven't yet got any um we haven't yet got any way to kind of get that data back so we are going to make a a new get request to return the current users to do's so router we're going to make a new route 
uh, using the, we'll just copy and paste the description, API slash to do's forward slash current. So that's gonna do return the current users to do's and that's gonna be private. And we are going to do uh, router dot get forward slash current. And we need the requires auth middleware. And we are going to do an async request, request or response, open up the arrow function. And again, the classic try catch. Once I log the error, if there's a problem. Oh, that's not how you spell catch. Don't know how I did that. Catch. Return res.status 500. And then we're going to send error.method. So what, <clears throat> what we need to do in here is we need to get the current users to do's. So I'm going to split this up. I'm going to return the completed to do's and I'm going to return the incomplete to do's. So const, we're going to do complete to do's. So we're going to grab them from the database. What we want to do there is we want to do equals await. We're going to do, going to do to do dot find. And what this is going to do is going to find multiple to do's from the database, as opposed to us using find one or find by ID previously. We're going to do find, which returns many. We're going to make sure it's we provide the user. So the to do has to be from our current user, which is request.user underscore ID. Um, and then I'm just going to uh, let's format that so we can see it nicely in a new line. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Right. So we're going to check for the user. And then we also want to make sure that the, com the complete is equal to true. And then we can also add a dot sort. And what this does is it sorts our results by some kind of whatever order we provide it. And I'm going to uh, sort it by completed at minus one, because when we set the to do to complete, we're going to store a completed at time. So I want them to be the completed ats, uh, the most recent completeds to the top of those results. And then I'm also going to grab the incomplete to do. So const incomplete to do's equals await to do dot find. It's going to be similar. We're going to use the user request.user.id and then complete is equal to false and then we're going to sort that by this time created at to minus one because we haven't got completed at at the moment because they're incomplete we haven't got a completed at um, set and then we are going to return res.json scroll down a bit and we're going to return an object it's going to be uh, incomplete, I'll do incomplete at the top. It's going to be incomplete to do's. And then complete is going to be complete to do's. Okay, so we've got that set up. Let's go to Postman. So that was very quick uh, to set up that route. I'm going to make a new tab to HTTP localhost API forward slash. Ooh. 5000 forward slash API forward slash to do's forward slash is it current? There we go. So, what we've got there is it's returned the current users incomplete and complete to do. So, if I clear this cookie here, we get our unauthorized message. message. If I log back in, we get our to do's back. Okay, so we can basically create and we are now able to create and get our to-dos, but we need to validate the boring bit. We need to validate the input for the to-do now. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna, inside the validation folder, we're gonna create a new one. It's gonna be called register to-do, uh, not register, sorry, to-do validation.js in camel case. And we're going to do similar to last time. So const validator equals require validator const is empty equals require dot slash is empty. <clears throat> and we're going to do const validate to do input. This is our function. We're going to pass it some data. 
And then we're going to let errors. We're going to make, open up an empty object again and then do our checks in here. So we all we want to do here pretty much is just we only want we only really want to check one input. Um, and that is the content. So check content field. So if it is empty, if it is empty data.content, we want to return an error message saying errors.content. Content field can not be empty. Then else if uh, validator is length data.content. So we're going to check the length of this. So if it's not between, say, min1, max300, we are going to errors, return errors.content. Content field must be between 1 and 300 characters. And if errors, so then at the end of this, we need to return something from our function. So return errors. And we um, also need to return is valid. So if it's if errors is not empty, it's, it basically it, it is invalid. If it is empty, then it's valid. And in case you were wondering, move the semicolon, errors, writing errors like this is just shorthand for doing errors is equal to errors. But we don't need to redefine it. Okay, so we've created our function. We now need to export it. So module.exports equals validate to do input. There we go. Auto finish for us. Okay, so we created our function. We now need to import that to the to-dos and we need to use it here. So let's import const. Um, or is it validate to do input equals require dot dot slash validation. <clears throat> slash to do validation and then inside where we create a new to do we want to do const is valid and errors so we want to um, destructurize from this function and get those out validate to do input and then a request dot body so it's in the body through so if is invalid uh, if is not valid we want to return res.status400 <clears throat> and then JSON of errors. So that will interrupt and say, so if it's not valid, if we don't have the content field, it should throw us up an error. So if I do go back to new, let's uncheck this content so we're not sending that through. We see we got a validation error saying content, content field cannot be empty and we got a 400 bad request status here. So I think that sums up this lesson. We've got really, we've really quickly created a um, an endpoint to get the current to dos and to create to dos. These are now attached to the user, so we can um, only return the current users um, if require uh, when required. Um, and in the next lesson, we need to have a look at um, updating our to dos. So updating could be a number of things. We could mark them as complete. We can mark them as incomplete. Uh, we could change the content. Um, all of this kind of stuff. So we need to have a look at um, we need to have a look at doing that now. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next lesson.